let's just breathe that in for a moment. This is October. We have a new theme. Our theme for the year, I always remind you at the beginning of the month, a new month, that the theme for the year is dwelling in the land of plenty. Dwelling in the land of plenty. And that's what we're continuing to do as we march through these months. And as we come into this month of October, our theme is Spirit says to sing your song. <laughs> Spirit says to sing your song. I love, there's, there's a song called Spirit Says to Sing Your Song, and I, I just love that. I love the song, and I love for us to remember to sing our song. And it's, we can never be reminded too often. I've told you this story before, but it's worth repeating that there, according to uh, uh, Jack Cornfield, there's a tribe in Africa where a birth date of a, of a child is not measured by the day it is born but by the time that it is conceived in the mother's mind. It is thought a thought in the mother's mind. And so when the mother thinks that she wants to have a child, she goes and sits under a tree and listens for the child's song, for the child to reveal that song to her. And once she gets the song that the child reveals, then she goes to the man who is going to be the father of the child and she teaches him the song. And then as they make love to conceive this child, they sing the song together to invite the child in. And while the mother is pregnant, she teaches the song to the midwives and to the old women of the village so that when the child is born, the old women of the village and the midwives are singing the song as the child comes into this world to welcome the child in. The old women then teach the child's song to, to all of the villagers. And as they learn the song and the child begins to grow and develop, then the villagers constantly sing this song to this child. And if the child falls down and skins a knee or hurts itself in any way, the villagers pick them up and love the child, picks the child up and loves the child and sings the song to it. If the child does something wonderful, makes good grades or whatever else, the villagers will sing the song to the child to honor it, to celebrate it, to, to, to let it know that it's loved by hearing its own song. So throughout the child's life, this song is sung by everybody. In marriage, the child teaches the so song to the spouse, and they sing the song throughout. And then when it's time for the child to die, and the child is lying on the deathbed, the villagers come in, and for one last time, they sing the child's song. We each have a song that was embedded in us since before we came into this planet. Mm -hmm. Because there's that intelligence that knows us already. There's that intelligence that has embedded in itself, has imprinted in itself, has, 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 has embedded its song within each one of us already. And so we each have a song, and Spirit is saying, sing your song. Sing your song. Sing that song that's always, always been within you, always been right where you are, always been awaiting your recognition of it. You're singing it. You're, you're, you're ex experiencing and, and, and sharing it with the world. That's what spirit wants us to do. That's why we have a song. We're supposed to sing it. And each of us has one. Each of us has one. Did I say each of us has one? Okay, each of us has one. And, and what we have to do is to remember that we have a song and to not get caught up in life on this plane, not get caught up in stuff on this plane, not get caught up in nothing trying to become something always on this plane. And that's what we do. Nothing trying to become something. And the more attention we pay to that nothing, the more something it becomes. 
And then we and then our song continues to get covered over and continues to get covered over and continues to get covered over until we continue to forget that we have a song. And our song then becomes a story. It becomes a story of what happened to us. It becomes a story of what we've lost. It becomes a story of that relationship that didn't work. It becomes a story of th that health issue that we may have. It becomes a story of the lack of limitation that we experience because of financial ruin or whatever. It becomes a story of our children or our parents or whatever the case may be. It becomes a story. And we tell that story over and over and over and over again in, in, in so many ways that we don't even remember that we have a song because the story becomes our song. That story becomes our song. And so I'm asking you today, what's your story? And are you willing to let it go so that your song can come through, so that your song can be expressed, so that your song that, that's already there just awaiting an opening so that it can be revealed, so that it can be, so that it can emerge, so that it can be revealed to the world. Oftentimes our stories are those that are told to us by others, what others think of us, what they call us, the labels we have, the way we are treated, all of that. But we can let those go because there's a song that's trying to come out. So, so the, the, the topic for today is when your back's against the wall, when your back's against the wall, when your back's against the wall, you know, there are times when we feel like there's no way to turn, there's no way out, there's, there, there's hopelessness, there's there our backs against the wall. We may have tried everything we know how. We may have prayed a lot. We may have treated a lot. We may have not prayed a lot. Or whatever the case may be, we may have complained a lot. Whatever the case may be, we still feel like our backs against the wall. We don't know where to turn. Or, think, or we may have been doing all the things that are right, and we still don't know. We still, there's still that something that's missing, that's something that makes us feel like our back's against the wall. And you know what? It's that song that we've been holding back. It's the song that we've been holding back. There's a song that says, it's a song when you feel like your back's against the wall. It's that you're holding on so tight because you don't want to take that fall. You don't want to make that move because you're fearing making a mistake. But the song that you've been holding back is the cause of your heartache. So it's the song that we hold back that causes our heartache sometimes. Because we know there's something deep down inside that we're supposed to be doing. We know there's a song deep down inside us that we're supposed to be singing. But we, you know, we play it safe, we play it small, and we hide and we don't allow ourselves to sing our songs. And so I'm inviting you today, first of all, to take a breath right now. Yeah, <laughs> take a breath right now because you can't sing your song without breathing. But you gotta sing your song. Make a commitment now to sing your song. And no matter what that wall may be, it may be the wall of, 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 of loss, it may be the wall of, of shame, it may be the wall of guilt, it may be the wall of judgment, it may be the wall of fear, it may be the wall of hopelessness. Whatever that wall is that we feel like is behind us, let's let that go. So let's let that go so that we can move away from that wall and just move into being in a place of singing our song, no matter what may have happened in the past, no matter where we're coming from, no matter how many changes have happened in our lives, and there are so many changes that can happen that can really make us feel like, I can't, I can't do this, I can't go forward, I can't, I can't, I can't. Let all that go. Don't quit. I don't care how many times you've tried to sing your song and got out of tune and forgot all about it and started telling a story. Don't quit. That's the first thing I want you to remember. Do not quit. Don't quit. No matter what, don't quit. There was a young, I read a story of a young woman who, a young girl who lived in England who was a wonderful singer. And her family was of modest means and she started singing and they, her parents encouraged her to sing and she had a wonderful, wonderful voice and she, 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 she sang, she had, she had multi-octaves, oct I, I forgot what you call that, multi-octaves she could sing. Um, but at any rate, she sang 
in the neighborhoods and she sang in the schools. And finally, she ended up at 13 singing for the royal family. And she was the youngest person ever to sing for the royal family. And when that, after that happened, she, her family moved to America and she, by 19 years of age, was on Broadway. And she was a star. And then she starred in one of the most uh, famous movies of all times. And she sang, she was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful singer. And then a few years ago, she, some nodules grew on her vocal cords, cords, and she couldn't sing any longer, so she had to have surgery. And once she had the surgery, the doctors assured her that she'd be able to sing again. And once she had surgery, it didn't get any better. It didn't get any better. It didn't get any better. She lost her voice and she could no longer sing. And she was devastated. She was devastated. She was devastated. But you know what? She picked herself up. She did not quit. And Julie Andrews began to act. She appeared on Broadway. She was in movies. She was voiceovers. She did voiceovers for many, many movies. She did everything and she became even more popular. She lost her voice, but she didn't lose her song. She lost her voice, but she didn't lose her song. She lost her voice, but she did not lose her song. So I don't care. Don't let somebody else tell you that you have to give it up now because you can no longer sing. You can always sing. Even when you lose your voice, we don't lose our song. And so I'm encouraging you, no matter what that wall looks like, no matter what, what we're thinking of as being our voice, we still have a song to sing. And so I invite you, don't quit no matter what. Don't quit no matter what. The second thing I want you to remember is to learn your song. You may have forgotten it. You may not have really known it clearly, but get real clear about what your song is and then learn your song. Learn your song and then sing it. Learn your song. Don't let somebody else tell you what it is. Don't let somebody else ridicule it in any way. Don't let somebody else judge it for you. Learn your song and then sing it. Because you know, your song is like your power. You cannot give your power away. I hear people say that all the time, that you give your power away. I gave my power to whoever. You can't give your power away. You can, you can fail to exercise your power. And when you do that, other people exercise theirs all over you. <laughs> <laughs> we see that happening in the world today, where people fail to exercise their power, and then other people's power gets exercised all over them. So we can't, we can't give our power away. We can't give our song away. We can just fail to sing it. And when we fail to sing our songs, other people sing theirs all over us. Other people sing theirs louder than we do. There was a story that my, fam my father used to tell when I was a child. <coughs> his, our family was his family, his side of the family. We are not very tall people. You may have noticed that. Uh, <laughs> my grandfather was not very tall. My father wasn't either. But I understand that when they would be in church singing on Sundays, if someone was singing louder than my grandfather, he would stand on the pew <laughs> so that nobody would, stand nobody would sing louder than he did. So uh, I, if somebody's singing louder than you, then just stand up, <laughs> stand on the pew so that you can be heard, so your song can be song is your failure to sing it. So I invite you to sing it, to learn it, and to sing it, and then teach your song to others so that others are singing to you your song. You know, Dr. Phil says we, we teach people how to treat us, and we do. People treat us the way we allow them to, and we allow them, as we allow them to treat us a certain way, that's what we're teaching them. If someone is treating you badly and you take it, and just, just go along with it, you're teaching them that's okay to treat me that way. 
If someone is treating you badly and you say, no, that, that doesn't work, you set boundaries, you're teaching them this is the way that I want to be treated, that I will be treated. So we teach people how to treat us. We have to teach ourselves how to treat us, too. We have to teach ourselves how valuable we are. We have to teach ourselves, and we teach ourselves the more we sing our song, the more we allow our, our songs to be heard, the more we allow it to emerge, the more we allow it to, to get out, the more we understand who we are, the more we remember who we are, the more we remember where that song came from in the first place. The more we remember that there's no separation between the song and the singer, and the only singer is God. There's only one singer, and there's only one song, God singing its song through each one of us according to our own uniqueness, according to our own unique voices, according to our own opening, according to our own individuality. And so when we're allowing that onlyness that is God to sing its song through us, then the sky's the limit. Then we can live the lives we were created to live. We learn our songs, and we each have one because God has a vision for itself as our lives. And so God's vision for our lives is our song. We may not know what it is, but the thing for us to do is to, re to surrender to the song. Surrender to Give up the fight. Give up the struggle. Give up the resistance. Give up the I don't know how. Give up the I don't, I don't want that. Surrender to the song. As I was thinking about this, this talk, surrendering to the song, I think this is how I got here. Just surrendering to the song rather than the I don't want a church. <laughs> <laughs> rather than I don't want, I don't, I don't want, I can't, I don't want. Just opening up and surrendering. Opening up and surrendering to the all that is because God already knew how he wanted to show up as me. God already knows how he wants to show up as you. God already knows the song that's to be sung through you as you. God already knows everything there is to know about you. God already knows your path. And so the thing to do is, in order for you to know what that is, is to align yourself with the all that is that already knows, to surrender to it, to say yes to it, and to say, I will sing my song. I am singing my song. You see, I rephrase that. Not I will down there sing it. I am singing it right here and right now, right where I am. I am singing my song. Take a breath and have the nerve to sing your song. Spirit says to sing your song. And it doesn't matter, as I said, what has happened in the past. It doesn't matter the things that may be going on in your life. It doesn't matter if you've lost your voice. It doesn't matter if you've lost anything. It doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. Because God, as the reading says, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes from Ernest Holmes is, God is always God. God is always God. God is always God, no matter what our emotional storm or personal situation may be. God is always God, and God is going to always be God. The allness and the fullness of God is always right where we are. The allness and the fullness of God is always available to us wherever we are. The allness and the fullness of God is always our very life. It is that life from which we can never be separate. It is that life that is always guiding, always directing, always showing us the way, always, always seeking to express to the highest and the best and the fullest through each one of us. And so be willing to sing your song. Be willing to allow it to be all that it wants to be in and through and as your life. That's what singing our song is about. It's about being willing to open up and then just allow spirit to express fully and completely. So when your back's against the wall and you don't know where to turn and you don't want to take that fall, you're holding on so tight, it's that song that you've been holding back. It's a song that you've been holding back. That's the cause of your heartache. So I'm saying let that song go. Set it free. Set that song free within you. How many people can feel it kind of stirring up inside? You may already be singing it, but you can sing it louder than you are. 
You may already be singing, but you can sing it in a bigger way. You can sing it in a bolder voice, in a bolder way. So if you feel it stirring within you, just allow it. Just allow it to come forth. Allow it to burst forth. Allow it to be all that it wants to be as you, as your song that is different from any other song, but as your song, your unique song that God gave to you only. Is that powerful? As many people as there are on this planet or anywhere in this universe, there's only one song that's yours. That's pretty powerful when you think about it. There's only one song that belongs to you and it's not the same one that belongs to me and it's not the same one that belongs to her or to him. Sing your song. Spirit says to sing your song. Don't wait. You don't have time to wait. Now is the time. Today is the day. This is the moment. Sing your song. Sing your song. Take a breath. Sing your song. <laughs> That's right. Sing it out. <laughs> Sing it out. Don't be afraid. Let's hear it again. Go for it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it from everybody. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yes, thank you. <laughs> he, he dared to sing his song, didn't he? I invited him to sing his song, and he did. Thank you very much, Hank. Thank you very much. I dare all of you to sing your song. You got the whole month to hear me say, sing your song. <laughs> We're just getting started. Let's take a breath and turn with them. Uh -huh, as we turn within to that perfect presence within each of us, that only presence within each of us, that only power, that only life, that only mind, that only breath, God, that onlyness is my life, that onlyness is the life of each of us here this day, that onlyness that is God guides us, directs us, shows us the way. That onlyness that is God has, has embedded its song within each of us. And we open up now and surrender to it and allow it to be sung in and through and as our very lives. So I'm speaking the word for each of us this day as we let go of the wall of fear, of judgment, of shame, of blame, of illness, of of, of lack, of loss, of any kind. We, we move away from that wall. And we just allow the song of the divine to be sung through each of us. And as we do so, our song is healing us on so many levels. But it's the song of God that is coming through. And that song is... That song is the only song that is for each of us. And so as I open this circle of prayer, I pause momentarily so you may, you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer. You may speak their names silently or loud, and you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names were spoken here this day, I know indeed that God is right where each of them is, blessing and keeping. That God is in the midst of every situation and every circumstance, every event, every activity. I know that there's healing happening everywhere. 
for God is everywhere. And it doesn't matter what the appearance is making. And so I simply say thank you, Father, Lord of God. Thank you for our song that we dare to sing this day. Thank you for the courage to sing it this day. Thank you for everything, oh God. I just allow it to be. And so it is. Thank you.